Okay, so this week I wanted to do something a little bit different because if you remember, and if you're on my email list, you have gotten an email last week talking about style struggles. Now, what sparked this whole email is the looking back at my sort of wardrobe analysis after the Curated Closet project that I did. So Curated Closet is a book that you can buy, I forget the author's name off the top of my head, um, but basically it goes through taking a look at your existing wardrobe and assessing what's working, what's not, and trying to find your style again. And what I talked about in the email was basically how since I've moved to Vancouver Island and I don't have a regular day-to-day -day job where I go to an office and am in front of people all the time, my styling has my styling needs have really changed. So what I'm sort of experiencing here is the fact that I've just turned 50 last year and uh, gained a little bit weight. I don't have the same lifestyle I once had. So I'm sort of in this uh, little bit of a style rut. Um, so two years ago, I kind of did a wardrobe analysis kind of following the lead of the Curated Closet book. Now I didn't finish the project at all. I sort of lost track of it and you know, lost interest actually, but it did kind of put me in a frame of mind to really think about what to sew for myself as I moved forward. And thinking about styling that worked and also kind of what kind of clothing it actually works to my lifestyle now. Not just my lifestyle, but my body now, everything that goes along with um, aging as well. So I wanted to give you a little update um, of what I kind of sewed in the meantime um, to sort of bridge the gap of what I had then and what I have now. But I also did send out a survey last week and I did wanna update you on some of the information there. And the general gist of everything is you definitely so tops more than anything else. So about 56 or 57% of you almost exclusively sew tops. About 20% are sewing dresses and about 20% of you are actually sewing a little bit of everything. And um, kind of, you know, some of you even sew all of your clothes, which I really think is amazing. It's something that I haven't been able to get to yet. There's still pants that I buy simply because I just don't have the time to sew for myself all of the time. Um, but generally, what you guys are looking for in styling is you want simple, classic, easy styling that works for your lifestyle. And that's exactly what I want to provide. So I think we're in the same frame of mind and I think it's really gonna work, work really well uh, when I sort of start to develop the in-house pattern, sewing pattern line even further next year. So just so we get a little bit of an idea of where I've come from and where I've gone, you can see that my outfit really hasn't changed that much. You can see that I have basically a loose fitting top and skinny pants um, at the bottom. And what kind of started off this whole thing is because when I did my wardrobe analysis, what I found is this was the top and the outfit that I felt the most comfortable in. And actually I felt so comfortable in this top that uh, this one is almost worn out. It's, it's kind of ratty and raggy already. So I don't wear it as often as I used to, but that's because I have made a million more of them. So if you don't remember, this is a top that I created from my basic bodice block. So it was actually designed um, to fit me exactly. So I think this is one of the reasons why it was it was kind of so comfortable for me. And I had the luxury of choosing exactly how much ease I wanted and the silhouette that I wanted. Um, so that sparked my first kind of sewing thing ended up being to use that information that that was my favorite and most comfortable. And I created um, the same pattern again, but only I just changed it to a V-neck. And you'll see this one is exactly the same, same exact base. I've just changed it to a V-neck. I've done it in black because I just cannot let go of black. I know everyone says that 
black, you shouldn't wear black as you age, but I just find um, that I'm just the most comfortable in black. And I think that's important. That's an important thing for me to notice. But I did try to inject more color into my wardrobe. So I did actually specifically go shopping for prints with kind of more vibrant colors and colors that I really loved. This worked out really well for a long time. Again, I've worn it so often, it's a little bit ratty. It almost needs a refresh. Um, the fabric wasn't great quality. It tends to pill a lot. This is called a bubble crepe. And so I don't know um, if all bubble crepes are like that or if that's just is something that uh, I discovered with this particular quality of the fabric. Poor quality fabric, beautiful print. Um, I really love the colors in it and I think they worked really well for me. Now, as I said, I've made a million of these. So what this turned into was many, many more versions. So once again, I made it in white because of course, everybody needs a white little t-shirt type style in the summer. And I've made it actually in even t-shirt form. So you can see here this particular fabric, which is all knit. And I just made a 5 8 inch neckband in a rounded uh, neckline sort of shape, which um, I love this. This is so comfortable to wear. And um, it's something that I'll definitely make more of. So we did that one and then I actually made a dress. So this is kind of a chambray. It's kind of a crepey chambray type fabric and it's exactly the same pattern. Again, a self-made pattern from my block and I've just elongated it to be a dress and then I created just a tie belt um, to, to wear with it. I usually wear this just around the house. In summer, it's cool, it's comfortable and uh, I actually wore, wear it a lot um, just around, even in the garden. And that turned into a dress. And then I sort of went a little bit further. I did the same sort of idea as the knit top, um, rounded neckline, but binding, French binding on the edges. And just a nice color. So this was part of my branding shoot. So this is one of the other things that I did when I was kind of transitioning. I was 48 when I first did that wardrobe analysis. And so since then, you know, turning 50, I realized that I really, really don't take much time for myself or to really improve, you know, the aging process within myself. And I really admire women who age gracefully and they sort of, they sort of use what they've learned throughout their life to keep on looking and feeling good. So what I did is I decided that I would hire a photographer and do a branding shoot for my company which sparked me to actually build a little mini wardrobe to wear um, at the photo shoot. And this was part of it. I chose a color that I really love that actually looks very good with my brand colors and um, decided I would build a little mini wardrobe around that. This, of course, is not part of that photo shoot, but it goes very, very well with what I've just been talking about, is basically using the same style over and over and over again and sort of working with it to create pieces that you are comfortable in and that you'll wear. And as many tops as I've had like this, the amazing thing is, is no one has ever said to me, oh my God, are you wearing that top again? It's so funny how each of these versions of this top looks different enough to the outside eye that no one ever notices if I'm wearing exactly the same thing. Or perhaps they're just polite enough not to say anything. So this was my latest version of this top. I've shortened it and I created a little tie front, which I really, really loved. Again, you just wear it with a camisole underneath. And again, it's a V-neck. V-necks I find very flattering on myself, but they're also very flattering on on anybody with a larger bust cup size. So if you're not sure what neckline looks good on you and you've got a larger cup size, definitely try the V-neck. Don't get too low, of course. You don't wanna show three inches of cleavage, but by all means, the V-neck is gonna be very, very flattering on you. Um, so those are the little t-shirt that I made over and over and over again that seems to, to work for me. And I will continue to do them actually. That's, that's definitely going to be the case. Now, just talking a little bit more about my little branding shoot, um, as I said, I wanted to make sure that I made sort of, kind of a little coordinating outfit. So what I did is the next thing I sewed, which was kind of the big piece um, of, the whole, of the whole shoot, was this jacket here. Now this jacket is a Style Arc 
jacket and it is the Dorothy woven jacket. Now as I talk more and more about the clothing that I've made, you're going to realize that when I take patterns, I rarely leave them as they are. So what I'll find is, is I will pick a style that I think is going to be great and then I realize that that style doesn't really work on me. So what I tend to do is I change positions of style lines, I change the shape of style lines, I correct the patterns. So if there's any kind of idiosyncrasy with the pattern that I don't like, I will correct them. And so I really go through a really long and arduous process of making the pattern work for me. And it's something that um, I really recommend is if you build your skills with fitting and pattern making, you will definitely be able to give yourself an even better fitting and a better looking garment. So that's something that I really recommend and I'm totally willing to teach you. I've got a new course coming out that I think you're going to love for this reason. And the reason I thought this co the course content is going to be so great is because it's exactly how I work. So what I wanted to say is this was the big jacket that I just loved. The Dorothy jacket from Style Art is very long and it's very pointed front and that was too dramatic for me. It just didn't work for my body. So what I did is I created something else. I made it a three quarter length sleeve because I like three quarter length sleeves. And by the way, so do all of you. I noticed that um, most of the comments about sleeve lengths were about three quarter or half length sleeves. So I love, love, love that you, you love that. There was one person who did say that they hated three quarter length sleeves. So don't worry, not everything is going to be three quarter length sleeves from now on, not to worry. So this jacket, and I had this top underneath, which looked really great um, together. I just, I really think that worked. Of course, I wore everything with these black pants, right? Because that's just how I wear things. Okay, so I made that jacket and I also have this Chelsea top. Now this one I have had forever. I wore this for the branding shoot as well. And this is a little bit longer than the sewing pattern is. I think it's about two inches longer, but this is also a style that works really, really well for me. And you probably can't see it very well, but there is definitely a V neck. And it's just a little short sleeve, loose throughout the waist. Um, but very fitted in this upper area, which is also brings attention to um, the width up here rather than drawing attention to the bust, which I love. And since that at least Chelsea top works so well, what I did is I made another one in a color because of course, I've been trying to get away from all black for a long time. It's very, very difficult for me because I love it. But um, this top came up next. Um, this one, I just, I don't, I like to have darker colors on top and it's very pretty and it looks really good in the photographs, but I really don't wear this version as much as I wear the black one. Now to go under that one, I made just this little swingy tank, which um, worked out really well for underneath. Um, but it's something that I will never wear on its own, no matter how hot it is. I just find that I don't like myself in sleeveless garments. And by the way, most of you guys don't like sleeveless garments either. So that was another great thing that came out from the survey, which I learned. I also um, made this cardigan. And again, this is the Nina cardigan from Style Arc. I'll just find it for you here. So the Nina cardigan, and once again, this cardigan is uh, really flattering. Again, it's, it fits quite snugly in the shoulders and the sleeves, and then it's got, sort of got this waterfall hem sort of idea, which is great. It's very dramatic. It's a little bit styling detail. But once again, I've taken this pattern and completely rearranged the styling. This original pattern has lots of cascading um, collar here, so it's very unstructured looking. This is very long in the front, which just was overpowering for me. So what I did is I changed the length and I changed the way the collar works. So I always seem to do this with patterns. I start out using the pattern exactly as it is. I do a sample and then I work with it until I find something that's really actually going to be flattering on me. So this ended up being great and which actually prompted me to try another version of this, which I'll show you in a little bit. Also on the branding shoot, 
I created another blouse. Now this is also another style art blouse and I know you guys are going to say all you sew is style art but the reason I love style art is because they use industry seam allowances. I'm pretty sure their pattern maker is industry chained. So I, I'm just comfortable. I'm comfortable with the techniques that they use, which I know they don't have very, um, very intricate sewing instructions, but I personally don't need them. I've already got the information and I know many of you too already know how to sew. You don't need the instructions to be as detailed. So I created this dotty blouse. Now I didn't change this style that much, but I did have to do quite a bit of fiddling around to sort of get the full bust adjustment to work. And what I ended up doing was putting more volume into this front dark, dark sorry, pleat here um, to create a little bit more fullness across the front of my body. But the reason I chose this particular style is because of that sweater that I told you I loved in the wardrobe analysis, that two week wardrobe analysis that I did. I love this sort of drapey front crossover style. So this worked out really well. Very feminine looking top and um, something that just, I will probably make several times over because I just love the style of it. Now, this, the rest wasn't a part of the branding shoot at all. That was sort of my little capsule uh, wardrobe that I had for the, the branding shoot. And if you want to see photographs of that, by all means, they're all over my website. So all you need to do is take a look at inhousepatternsstudio.com and you'll see those images. Now I did go to a wedding in October last year. A friend got married and I wanted to make a dress for that. So I made this Vogue pattern dress and it is Vogue 1586. So it's a Tracy Reese style. Now let me tell you, this took a lot of time and effort to get to this stage. The general styling looks exactly the same, but I cannot even remember how many alterations I needed to make to make this work for me. The front crossover asymmetrical styling that's that's introduced in the pattern was just not working for me. I didn't like how it was overlapping. I thought it was awkward. So what I did is I completely redesigned this front, but keeping all the styling details the same. The armholes on this particular pattern are so low that um, it was just very impractical. So I ended up having to basically redraft the entire bodice part of the pattern. The pattern itself is very, very long in the skirt. I think I draw, I cut off probably about six inches or so again, but kept all the styling generally the same. The style um, is really pretty actually. It looks pretty good on me. Again, it's that V-neck styling, a little bit of crossover, um, bust fitting in the styling details. So I really love those things about this particular pattern. Now, of course, I wanted to get away from all black. So my next option was going to be to do navy because this was really the only other dark color that wasn't black that I could go for. So I decided that since I have one pair of jeans and these are the same jeans from, from two years ago, um, simply because I don't wear them very often. I, I just have never found jeans very comfortable. I don't know why. These are the best version of jeans that I've ever found. So I keep, keep them at hand. Um, again, they're purchased. I didn't make them at all. But I wanted to bring the ability to um, kind of wear more blues because I just thought navy is the next best thing to um, to black. So these are also purchased. Again, RW is I always buy my pants there simply because they fit. I don't really think about them too much. Um, they're leggings and they're snug. So so th these these pants actually work with all of the blue things that I've made. So this is that Nina cardigan that I told you about. So this again is that restyled Nina cardigan. You can see I took out that waterfall hem. But I find that I don't wear this cardigan very much. And I think it's simply because it looks too casual for me. So my idea of how I like to dress is I really like to dress smart and sophisticated. Um, I don't like this sort of um, too casual yoga wear sort of look. I like it to be a little bit sharper and a little bit um, 
less casual, but I like to be comfortable. So this cardigan is something that I'll definitely do again, but I'm gonna just choose a little bit better fabric. I can see it maybe in a ponte knit, which it might work really, really well and look a little bit more elevated and refined. And next I had to develop a course which uh, was called the Perfect Shirt Workshop. And in that workshop, what I wanted to do was show you how to create a, a sewing pattern from your basic bodice block. So that was the whole goal of that course. So what I did is we did a shirt style because it's something that's really classic and never goes out of style. So we created this shirt style and we also did a princess seam version of it in that class as well. So these are my examples of that. So this one is in a kind of a lightweight denim. And this of course is in, a, I think it's a rayon and a linen blend, mostly rayon of course. Um, so in the blues, grays, categories, this shirt I love. It's so comfortable. I wish I could wear it every day. It's one that I haven't made um, too many of yet. This one is fine. I think I overfitted the princess seams a little bit for myself. So I find that I don't wear this dress very often. I do feel more comfortable in shirts and pants. So that's, I don't wear dresses that often. Also in the blues category was the uh, Juliet, I believe, yeah, Juliet woven shirt, again, style arc. And what I loved about this style is it has this little tie here. So much like most of you who replied to the survey and said that you like something classic and simple, but with a little bit of a twist, some detail that is a little bit different. And I'm on the same page as you because this is what I look for in patterns too. And so I made this one. And this is pretty much exactly the same. So this is one of the styles which I didn't actually change the styling of until I decided that I'm gonna try one without the tie. So I tried those two, they're great shirts and I have worn them. But honestly, right now I'm a little bit tired of them. So I'm not really sure if that's just that I don't like the fabric too much or what, I'm not surely sure why. I think I just might be a little bit tired of the style. I also made this, which has a little bit of a waterfall collar. I get lots of compliments on this particular jacket. Now, this is called the Sienna woven jacket. So this has the waterfall. This has been around from Style Arc for a while. This also went through lots and lots and lots of pattern changes. The ultimate style is looks the same, but the original pattern has darts at the front and I have actually created princess seams instead. I just couldn't get those darts to fit properly with the full bust adjustment that I needed to do. So I created princess seams instead and got something that worked out really, really quite well. Honestly, I love this jacket, but I probably have only worn it once or twice. And it's just simply because I don't really go places where I need to wear jackets, which is why I think most of you guys are saying that you don't really sew jackets too much. Um, there are very, very few occasions where I would need this. But I did think that maybe this would be great to wear um, kind of as a more cardigan style. So what I did is I made it into this style, which is made out of a boiled wool. And it's just not structured enough for me. I find that I want my jackets to be a little bit more tailored looking, less sloppy. So I feel really frumpy and sloppy in this particular one. So it's really interesting how the fabric can totally change how you feel about a style. So that's something that, um, you know, to keep in mind when you're shopping for fabric. So in addition to that, this is once again, that same pattern, which was called, I've forgotten already, the Dorothy jacket. And this was one of the first versions I made. I love this fabric. I loved how it turned out in this print, but it fits so well, I can't move in it. So here's a lesson about overfitting. So in other words, it fits beautifully. It looks perfect when I have it on, but I can hardly move in it. There's no way I could drive, move my arms forward or anything. I just find that I'm fiddling with it all day. So again, I don't wear this one very often because I've overfitted it. 
This is also the Dotty jacket and this one I don't wear often either because I don't like the long sleeves and I feel like the sleeves are really a little bit too big for me. And I think it's simply because I went and took a woven pattern and I made it out of this scuba knit, which I should have made it a little bit smaller in order to accommodate for the stretch in the fabric. But I really loved this print and I thought it'd be great in a jacket. But once again, I think I think I might just at least try shortening the sleeve just to save it. Um, but I find that I can't wear this jacket open because it's a bit heavy and floppy looking. So maybe I will try to fix that, but I'm not sure. I'm not a very good uh, at reworking things that are already done. Okay, and then now I made a couple of these wrap dresses because wrap dresses are something that is you're supposed to that are supposed to be amazing on women who have, you know, larger cup sizes. The crossover always works. The waists are adjustable because it's a wrap. But I find that on a wrap dress, almost always when it's a full wrap dress like this, and by the way, this is the Leah knit wrap dress. When you have a true wrap dress like this, the neckline is always too low. So I always feel really self-conscious about it. I want it to sit a little bit higher. So I tend to want to wear a camisole underneath, which again, sort of, you know, defeats the purpose of the wrap dress in my opinion. So I think if I was going to rework this style, I'd try to find some way that I could create a higher neckline and still get that sort of crossover look. Um, this style does look great on me, but I just, I'm not comfortable in it. I just feel like it's a little bit too revealing. Um, I was hurt and I love the sleeve length. So this is a half length a sleeve length. So it goes to about the elbow or just slightly below. And I created it again in a short sleeve, um, thinking that, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's just me, but I find that I still, these two dresses look great on me, but I rarely wear them because I just find, I feel too self-conscious in them. So this dress is the Maggie London dress and it's by Butterick 4789. And this dress is something that I thought would be great for me. I always wanted to try this like twist front sort of styling. And, and I've had this pattern since 2006. So it tells you how long I've been wanting to do this. Um, it's made out of a knit, which is this fabric I love. I got it at Gala Fabrics, which is a local, local fabric store here in Victoria. And the thing about this is I really don't like how low the neckline is and I don't like the pooch that it creates over the tummy. So I've decided that perhaps this type of styling, it looks good on other people. I think that I will leave it alone for others to use. So I did have a few failures by all means that uh, during the whole process and things that I thought would be great but just didn't end up looking good. So here's one of them. This is also a style art um, top. This is the Almy woven top from Style Arc, and it just didn't work. It doesn't work with the type of styling I like. Um, it has like kind of loose waist and the button front and the collar, but I find it's a very impractical style. The collar is so floppy that I find that if there's any slight breeze, the collar sort of ends up you know, being very messy around my neckline. And also I made it too long. So I don't have anything really good to wear at the bottom. It's not long enough for a dress and it's not short enough to wear with pants and, and not look too short. So I should have tested the length before I put the buttons in because now I'm stuck and I'm probably not gonna wear it unless I really need to pull something out of the closet to wear at home. So that was a fail for me. Another fail was the Style Arc Ariana woven dress. Now this, the print I loved is just a polyester twill type fabric and um, it has the elastic back, so I thought it'd be great. We were going to Cuba last, in March, I think it was, and I wanted to make some, you know, dresses for the warm weather and stuff, but I never took it because what I found is, is that it's just, it doesn't feel like me. It's too girly. Um, I like a little bit more tailored look and a little bit more refined look, and I just found that this 
just didn't fit the bill for me. I did make the straps wider. I had to rework the entire front for a full bust adjustment and also the strap position, everything I had to rework. Um, but at the same time, I ended up just not loving it. Once again, it's be an at home garden dress at the most. And here's a couple of fails, more fails of choosing the wrong fabric. So this is a linen cotton blend, but I love the print and I just thought what a great summer jacket to have something light and airy like this. This fabric is absolutely the wrong fabric for this style. I find it sticks to everything. It gets wrinkly in about three minutes and I just do not like that super wrinkly look. I like a little bit crisper, refined look. So although I love the print, and I think it'd be a great summer jacket. It's probably never gonna get worn again because I just felt like a rumpled mess when it was all, when I, by you know the end of the day when I did wear it. Another miss was this one. This is the Chelsea's top again, and I love the print. I even love the fabric. It's a 100% linen fabric, and it even has, has such a soft hang. But because linen wrinkles, when I'm sitting all day, I get wrinkles across the tummy here, and then the whole top hangs shorter, and I feel so self-conscious in it, and I'm pulling at the top every every time. So although I love this print and I love the fabric, it just wasn't it just isn't working for me in terms of of styling and um, the hang of the garment. So uh, definitely something that hangs in my closet, and again one of those things that sometimes you just will never wear out because you don't want to be uncomfortable all day. Okay, so those are basically the wins and fails from the last two years. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching that. If you've got any comments to share or you want to share some insight, by all means, you can do that. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I always post these things on my Instagram account at in-house patterns on Instagram. So you can always follow to see me in the outfits. I'll put some photos below because I know some of you don't aren't, aren't really into social media, which is great, which is fine. I have no problem with that. I find it hard to keep up myself. Um, and yeah, so that's basically, that's basically it. Um, so one of the other things that I did, um, between being 48 and turning 50 was, um, just, I actually hired a makeup artist to come to my home and actually give me a makeup lesson. So this was something that I also wanted to do for myself because as you age, our coloring changes and also makeup styles change too. And I just kind of wanted to have a little bit upgraded look. And I have to tell you, it was one of the best things that I've done for myself. I learned so much from the two hours that I spent with her and um, it was such a great, um, it was so good to get get some suggestions on how to improve improve your look and change change the way you look um, as you age. So um, that's something that I wanted to just share with you because if you are kind of feeling in a rut, I really recommend that you do something like that. Get your photos taken. Really think about um, kind of how you want to look and feel, and also just give yourself an uplet. Get your hair and your makeup done, and and see what's possible for you because it honestly does make you feel better about yourself, and it's something that's really really helped me. So I'm happy to share that with you. Anyways, we'll talk to you next week. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.